I it's absolutely, I absolutely love Big Sean. I love that guy. But we're we gonna say about the album. Well, first of all, I love it. It's amazing. I think you should listen to it. I think you could listen to all of it. I enjoyed it. I think it's like a beautiful baseline for how you should just think and feel all the time. Yeah, so, he gets he gets he gets metaphysical. He gets abstract. There's a lot of just like being positive and being grateful. I love that the bar. How could it get any better than this? Because like if that gets stuck in your head, I had a whole day where all I kept just saying to myself, "How could it get any better than this?" And it's I like just, a mantra. It is a mantra. <laughs> yeah, and it's a positive. It's like because if you're going to ask something of the universe, if you're going to make your mind think about, if you're going to put a thought out there, it's like, mm. "How could it be better? How could it be better?" And that's a great pulse just to have. Yeah, you'll get an answer. It's so much better than being like scared or nervous or worried because that's like, what's the question you're asking? Like, what do you? What's the, what's there to be afraid of? Like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a dual. Dual weapon. It's like the now and the future. Right. It's like, how can it get any better? But it's like, I don't know. Like, there's also an implication that, like, it's already amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. blessed as it is. Right. And it's like, how can it get any better than this? And then it's like, I'll show you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, that surprises you in a positive way. I felt that. That's I, I agree with you because I felt that when I kept accidentally doing that mantra all day. Because mm-hmm. most mantras, when you're like. Lyrics get stuck in your head. Exactly. So so it's just boom, boom, boom. And then like after maybe three or four times of myself like catching myself, just like saying it impulsively, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, okay, I could choose to stop doing that now. Like that's almost annoying even for me, you know? <laughs> but then I was like, wait a minute though. That's kind of like, then it hit me that it could be beneficial if I just like kept thinking that all day long, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's hard to be on that vibe every day per se, but that's why it's a good album just to kick around and play around because I feel like there's a lot of like just good shit in there, you know? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, he, has, he kind of built his artistry on that, or at least through my lens of looking at him. Right. He's always, he's always been kind of about a little bit deeper or like, I guess, trying to strive for that expression of that idea, trying to communicate his truth. Uh-huh. And his truth seems to be like, yeah, reading the four spiritual laws and or the four agreements and all, all that kind of like the alchemists, yeah. that type of mental warrior, create your own life, positive enlightenment, like upward and so that, he's always been about that shit. Yeah. It's, it's lit. Yeah. He also has, the way he talks about being a dad, I thought was just like really, um, that shit was fire, dude. Like I needed that in my life. Just like thinking mm-hmm. about having a kid, you know? And mm-hmm. just like the way that he talked about it and the way that he like, you know, I think there's like, he says one where he's like um, on up. That song specifically, yeah. I feel like is like. Dedicated. Heavy, right. Yeah. But that influence is all in the album and different bars and stuff. Yeah. And I love the song On Up, man. Like it really like kind of just gave me a vision for someone that I relate to and aspire to be and how they think and how they feel and how they like manage the stress of that and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I felt uh, for anybody that's like a 30 year old, which checks out because Big Sean popped when we were like in high school. You know what I'm saying? So like that is his core fan base group. Mm -hmm. As he grows and just talks about what he's going through in his life. If he still does it at like the pinnacle of his pen, it's still going to hit me like the true fan. And I, I'm growing with him and evolving with him. And that's like, I mean, dude, that, that, as a, that's art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck being a rapper. Our shared experience. Yeah. Fuck the business side of it, like making money. Like that's dope. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. dope to be able to grow with somebody like that. Yeah. That's super cool. It's like, I, yeah, I just kind of had the thought while you were saying that, that we did sort of the same way that. Like Luke and Derek and uh, you, you and like everyone's like our friend group and our surrounding friend groups are like having kids and growing up in that sense. Yeah. It's like we got to see like Drake and Big Sean like have a kid, you know what I'm Yeah. <laughs> like we know them kind of like that. It's like, yeah. oh, now he's got a kid. It's crazy. Right? Yeah, it's cool. It definitely brings something else out of you. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, there's a lot of things I think about it. One, I think that it's like a it's a it's an archetypical thing that happens. I think it's like a story thing that happens. Mm-hmm. So for you for you to naturally go through a lot of changes when something that's going to change you is occurring, it's I don't even think it's it's funny because I wouldn't think it's biological in nature. Like, how, why would my biology change? You know what I'm saying? Why mm-hmm. would I get stronger? Or like, why would my physique like change? Like, I'm putting on weight and stuff like that in like a different way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh. But if it's archetypical in the story, the story is bigger than the biology. Like, of course, my biology would change. You know what I'm saying? You could literally become a different person. You do become a different person because here's what happens. Mm -hmm. As you navigate the frequencies that your energy can exist on, it radiates what you are. 
You know what I'm saying? What you are today uh-huh. and what you are tomorrow, the glow you have on your skin, the way your smile looks when you smile at somebody, the the deepness in your eyes can change overnight, dude. Mm. And it's like not every mm. experience is so transformative, but we are not so bound to this physical being that we feel like you see in the mirror every day. Yeah. It's yeah. not the case. Mm-hmm. You're, if someone goes through something traumatic, you'll see something in their face change and they're not the same person, you know? Yeah. But also like if you see someone that, you know, just went IPO and they just went from having like barely getting by to they just now they're worth like $2 million and they're getting that salary coming in. Now they got a bigger house. Now they got a boat. Company's doing well. That person's smile. They're fucking, <laughs> woo! The like, phys- yeah, the whole physiology. Yeah, their, their posture. The biochemistry. Right? Yeah. And when you're, you know, the opposite spectrum of that, that's how you have like, you, you, you see the guy smoking cigarettes and he's going bald and he's out of shape and he's hairy everywhere. It's like, what's the, what is that? What is that thing? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because it's like, it seems to me that you're the... The manifestation of the reality that you're living in is highly based on like your belief system, philosophy, what kind of thoughts that allows you to think, what kind of mantras you have, whether or not you're conscious of them or not, or they're mm-hmm. hip hop lyrics, or they're something you self taught. You read in a book, yeah. Like, what, what do you tell yourself every day? It's like, oh, I'm ass, bro. Like, self talk is big. Bro, it's huge. It's like a fucking radio that your mind's listening to when, all day, all day long, every day, all day. So all that to say, mm-hmm. Big Sean is great in the sense that I would want to. I want. Here's what I want to do with that record. I want to buy a fucking record player. Record player, and then I want to get the vinyl of that, and I just want to play it when I'm cleaning the house or when I'm fucking doing something, and I just need something on in the background that's maybe not just like random TV. Just like play that, so that way it's just like kind of like on as a vibe that like you know any you know also maybe you know my kid one day if I'm doing that will just like be rapping Big Sean at me and not even know if my kid's like just walk around being like, how can it get any better than this? I'd be like, let's go. Good baseline. Yeah. Good baseline. Good baseline. I love that album. Yeah. It's good. I'm fucking with it. I'm fucking with it. This is where you're talking about Better Me Than You is what it's called, right? Yeah. Big Sean. Yeah. Just came out last week. Yeah. Sometime in that ballpark. It's great. Love that guy. Love that guy. Been following him since, yeah, we were in high school. Long time. It's been like 12, 12 plus years, bro. That's a long fanhood. Really cool. So many. We can go down talking about hip hop. I'm down. Um, one thing is that about that album is what it, I am sad about. I'm not critiquing Big Sean at all because I love it so much. But I, I wanted like the bangers that would be my anthem. There's like a playlist in my Spotify that's like my soul. Okay. And Big Sean's song used to be number one on the playlist that was my soul. And I'm like, where's that? Where's my... Where's my tomahawk? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where's my Jordan's flu game moment? Like, I need something from you that's like, that's why he's my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And and I'm not saying it didn't have that, but it, I felt like it was lacking the punch, man. Where's the punch, bro? You know what I'm saying? You mean punch is in like, uh, like like a bang or like a like a gym hype banger or like like what do you mean? I need that gym hype banger that's also like a man like like fourth quarter freestyle. Mm-hmm. He's like, I turn my click faculty. When I'm done, they go statue me. A touchdown in my city, a fucking walking target. Like, I don't know, man. There's it's so hard, but it's also so like aspire like what I truly aspire to be, you know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. He's not out there saying like, I'm turning into a mob boss, I got people working under me. You know what I'm saying? He's saying like, uh I turn my click faculty operation to factory, like I don't know, it's just like different, you know what I'm saying? It strikes me as like a more a, not like appropriate per se, but it's just like metaphysical is deep. It's exponentially more energy to manifest than something like real that we could touch. Mm. So if it's his stuff is just like from such a different perspective that I think it's like more true and more effective. So it's like, I don't even want to listen to that, to that other shit. Cause it's not true. I can't like apply it. It's not applicable. It's just like, mm-hmm. I'm rolling down rock. It's like, I, I like that shit too. I do. There's a part of me that wants to be like, just go crazy but it's like <laughs> big sean had this way of saying some shit that i was like that's why he's better than everybody else bro that's crazy man that's okay. like but you feel like i didn't have that where was it do you know I, I don't know i don't know i guess i don't know i guess i, I just kind of heard it throughout the album or i guess as 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 a, i just listened to it in one long take so i didn't really break it down by like song by song so i don't really know the songs exactly but i definitely heard it all the way through at least once and every right. every song maybe 
some songs multiple times. Like a, a couple songs that come to mind for sure. Like yes, yes is yes yes is my gym banger. <laughs> There's like the just the, just the energy behind it, you know, just the energy behind it or the the intention of the energy. Okay, yeah, that song is that song amazing. Was hard. Yeah, that song is uh, that song gets me there. That's what I'm saying. That's something you can put in your bag. Mm-hmm. That's the thing too. You can be like. No motherfucker, yes, yes. And then that's like, what is that happening? And for me, what that means to me is mm-hmm. when something is like a roadblock or a no, it's like, oh, I can't do that. It's like. Yeah, the, the the can't do, the the no. Yeah. The roadblock. It's like, nah, fuck that, I overcome. I make it happen. It's the make it happen. <laughs> this comes out from a foundation of I'm going to get it done. Or don't take no for an answer. Yeah. Like I've, I've been given that advice. Just like, don't take no for an answer. Like that, you know. There's a way you can you can say you can say no to a no sometimes, yeah, and and that's powerful. You know what I'm saying? And a no to a no is a yes. It's a yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> like exactly, yeah. And uh, and so yeah, that song's like something you pull. You can pull that out of your bag. You can use that. Mm-hmm. But like old Big Sean, like bro, like uh, finally, well, finally, famous Big Sean was like one of my favorite albums of all time. I don't even think that he like like the first one, his studio album, yeah, with the red <laughs> with, uh, with the red cover. Yes, that album was whole. It was complete. Like truthfully, I'm like that was good football, boys. We're gonna run it just like that. Smash mouth football. Make them just like that, like they used to. <laughs> they don't. Mm-hmm. It had freaking. It had everything you could want. It had I do it, which was a radio banger. That was also a gym banger. Yeah, it had my last. It had Chris Brown singing. Fucking ass. It had ass club banger. It had memories. Memories get to your heart and soul. Your touch soul. you. That song. That song is Big Sean. You know what I'm saying? If there's one song, that, that's the one. I think that's the one. Dude. And if you've never heard it, great song. Memories by Big Sean. The intro to the album is amazing. It's yeah. just like 45 minutes of him kind of like... Or seconds. 40, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long album. <laughs> 45 seconds of him... Uh, kind of, I think he's just kind of light rapping, right? Yeah. he's. I think he's rapping on the beat to Memories. Yeah, right? It's like a to- like talking rapping, kind of a spoken word almost. Get it, let's go. So far. Yeah. Go, go. Yeah. Go, go. City on my back. I mean, so that way. We're still sleeping long enough to dream. Or something like that. Yeah, he's been going hard. He's been going hard. But a couple songs on that, on his newest shit that I'm I'm fucking with. Yes, for sure. For sure, for sure. Typecast. I like Typecast a lot. Yeah, I remember hearing that song and thinking it was good. It is what it is. It's really good too. Yeah. And then uh, those are like kind of like more of like... Uh, gym gym tempo songs, but then also uh, something is the other one I like a lot too. So far, something. Yeah, it's like everybody going through something. Everybody going through something. Yeah, yeah. It goes, yeah. It's like, isn't that a nice thing to have just in your house? All right, time? exactly. You know what I'm yeah. Everybody going through something. This is facts. Everybody going through something, bro. Yeah. Everyone's going through it. We're all going through it. That's what I learned at my last job. Like mm. two jobs ago, didn't know that. Last job, it was like a keystone lesson. Just to like, res- just to have more empathy for the narrative that ev- everybody's living. So like, was it- there like a particular instance or something that like happened to switch that, flip that switch? So two jobs ago, I was definitely just more. I, I one of the keystones was Michael Jordan. Learn to be more like Michael Jordan. But then it got to the point where like, yeah, when Steve Kerr like punches Michael Jordan because he's just like, I mean, pushing people in. bullying almost borderline bullying. <laughs> Man, bullying such a. It doesn't feel like you're doing it until you're outside of the washing machine and you're like, I guess in a sense, I definitely was like being pushing for sure. Antagonistic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's bullying. You know what I'm saying? Oh boy, pushing. You pushing, pushing. Literally. <laughs> yeah. It's also like this weird thing where I also thought we were kind of like the best of the best around. Yeah. So if you weren't like performing or honoring or respecting that, it was like, you could just leave. You know what I'm saying? You know, what are you doing here anyway? Yeah, like, the you're not... What are you talking about This here? is not complaining about these standards. This is not complaining about these standards. But you're having, like, a really rough time and getting pissed off at me for ask, for being the one person to ask you, why aren't you living up to the standards? You know? Mm-hmm. But then, like, I went down the Michael Jordan train, and I had, like, three days left before I was leaving for a better opportunity. And this dude, like, slapped me in the face. And, <laughs> yeah, I remember this. Right? <laughs> I remember this story. I was like, you know... Dude, you're not doing your job. You're playing like ass. You're late today. You're late every day. What the fuck, dude? Because it didn't really start that, but it started with me being like, bro, I'm, I'm tired of backpacking your section. Like, can you please? I don't want to take care of both sections. And then it turned into a whole fucking thing. 
and then resulted in him like he like tried to slap me like almost like a Will Smith moment. I kind of like leaned <laughs> back and he just like got my lip he brushed you, and I was just like my lip popped and was like bleeding a little bit, but it didn't like hurt at all. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, bro, mm -hmm. getting brushed, and then. I left. Prick. They were just like, say, bro, you don't have to finish your two weeks. It's cool. But it was like one day left. And I was like, all right. All right. That's cool. Whatever, bro. Fucking weird. So leaving that. And also the thing was is that I left because they didn't want to give me a raise and a promotion. And I left for that raise and promotion. But I got slapped. And then when I went into this new place, I was like, maybe, maybe the reason that guy slapped me is like to them, they were like, that's why we didn't want to hire that guy. I mean, like. He literally got slapped by someone he works with. Like, that's not someone we want in a leadership position. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's kind of like maybe our hesitancy validated in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, fuck y'all, man. Like, I don't want to that's be. Bougie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was like, well, let me, let me look, look inward. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then we're at the new place. And then we're going to fucking war every day. Starting a new business is no easy task. Yeah. Just going to bat, right? New business. Starting at like the busiest time of the year. For that particular type of industry, going ham, going nuts, and fig having to figure it out every step along the way. Right. Mm -hmm. So, just the way that I saw those people work, and I saw them come in, and I could relate to them because I'd been in their position. But also, I was in charge of them, so I saw like from like a over like a third person perspective. Instead of being in one experience, I saw forty experiences of the new. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then from that perspective. Watching the people that cared and committed and like rounded the corner and like we set the expectation, we set it verbally, we showed what it could look like, and then we gave like a literal example of us being that way. And some people rounded the corner and became like the Cirque du Soleil archetype that we kind of demanded. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that shit to me, because I've been through the struggle of being new in, new in that environment and having to t to round that corner myself, and it just like earned so much like. So it was like the Grinch. Like my heart grew like four times its size. <laughs> and I was just like, man, when I look at them and see them messing up, I just wonder like, are they okay? Or if they're late or if they're like not performing, if their attitude's bad. I'm just like, instead of being like, hey, what the fuck? This is Chicago, baby. We're going on a playoff run, bitch. This is it. Mm. Um, Instead, I'm like, you know, are you okay? Like, what's up? Like, how can I help you? How How do I help you get back? Like, what do you need? Let's just like get you right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I f the reason that's not a shorter story is because like life pushed that into me. I didn't like really go out to seek that other than just like being aware. And then also when they earned my respect and my appreciation and it made me want to like chill out. There's also another part of me that's like, maybe that's not good. Maybe you need to be like, it's a better tactic to win more championships. If you just like push people like that, you know what I'm saying? push yourself like that but it just felt like it, it I, I was sitting there feeling it and i was like i don't think that's the way to like win right now i don't think that's gonna help these people play better you know like i think that being more supportive and more empathetic and applying more love what that at least what that is to me you know is going to boost the performance and get us closer to what we need to win in this situation right here for sure and uh i don't know man i think that's just to me that's like how character growth happens that's how it happened to me in the last like book of my story you know uh -huh. that was like true change that happened within me and um i don't know it was cool yeah everybody going through something yeah bro that's the thing that's the thing man like yeah we're all dealing with this i don't know what's going on in their life yeah i guess it demands it, it's always a balance it's always the the underlying truth of like fucking everything but it definitely is you need to have empathy and love Lead with empathy and love for sure. But you also need to be, there's standards, you know, there's standards. And we need to uphold those and uh, accountability and responsibility, you know. It's like, it's a privilege. And, or uh, it's kind of, if you like take that away from somebody, it's like you're taking away the chance for them to rise to an occasion. Sure. That's not good. So it's definitely a balance between the love and not, not, not fear necessarily, but like the enforcement of standards for sure. Because one thing is like, if you can't play to the standard, I almost mm -hmm. don't think you belong there. Do uh, that's, what the, that's what the standard is <laughs> right. so then that's like, the line we're talking about this michael jordan tyranny like it's a bad thing but like that's really the spirit it's of necessary, it necessary yeah right it's necessary to a degree but then i realized that these people are man like these people are paying their rent you know what i'm saying like they're paying the rent with the money that we're paying them it's not like they're buying lamborghinis with it 
It's like they're just like barely getting by with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's like that pulled more grace out of me when I saw somebody that I thought was under the standard and should leave. And then I saw them like having a rough time and not like looking like they're having very much fun while they're getting their ass kicked. And then I realized that this is like, they're only doing this because they have to pay their bills anyways. Because they feel the need to. Right. Yeah, they have to. Right. And in that moment, I'm just like, just help them. Just help them. Like, I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. just help them because I think gravity is going to happen anyways. Like if they're going to, I don't have to take them out of the situation. The situation will take them out of the situation if that's what's going to happen. But if all I want to do with my soul and myself is just help them while, while I have the chance, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was like one of those things that like clicked in the character change. What changed my perspective into place was when I like saw that person having a bad time. And then it was like, click and then i just went over and started doing shit as much as i could you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. because like who am i to be like fuck this get him out get him out do i want to be the executioner like i fucking don't you know yeah yeah i guess if you're going to be the king or the person who's in charge or like run like whose judgment we're going forward with it's like you need to be able to to pass the sentence you know but you shouldn't just be beheading everybody for the littlest shit it's a fine balance it's a fine balance can't be burning everybody alive. Turn to the Mad King. These are good questions. You want to switch to kingship because we can talk about that. Kingship? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's just <laughs> let's just like let's say I am like a king of a country, uh, like olden times, like five hundreds. I've got like a yeah medieval times, medieval type times. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So they're not super huge kingdoms, but like you know, we got some land and shit, right? And you got a kingdom. Okay. Right. And then we meet each other, and then it's crazy because we don't know very many people that are like leading countries, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, how do you handle capital crimes in your country? Mm. Capital crimes would be, like, murder? Yeah. Well, I don't know what you deem capital crimes. Okay. <laughs> that, that's one of my other questions, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. For instance, like, uh, cattle rustlers. Okay, yeah, People that stole yeah. cattle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were, that's a capital crime in Western culture. So they would just get executed. <sighs> Even though stealing a cow right now wouldn't get you executed, you know what I'm saying? Sheesh. You see, I was... Much more important back in the day. Yeah, because I guess it was kind of, it was fucked because eight guys on guns with guns and horses could steal 100 cattle. And if you had, if you were a rancher and you had 100 cattle and they stole all of them in one day, like your family would die. Like th- it was the depression. Like you couldn't, you'd be cooked. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to. How you going to make any money? Yeah, you're done, bro. Or, and yeah. You probably owe money on the house and the farm anyways. So you're like, the debt, the collectors are coming. It's a whole thing. And that can, but if you're like a farmer, you can't steal a crop. You know what I'm saying? If there's like plants everywhere and they're mm-hmm. like selling corn, you can't you can't like steal someone's whole farm settlement in like an afternoon. But you could take their <laughs> entire... Take all their cattle. Yeah, exactly. So then I, I heard this on fucking Joe Rogan. I'm not... This isn't research I did. But just to share the story. So to get yeah. some context. Okay, okay. Uh, so then these cattle rustlers, they treated it like murder. Like if you were someone who stole cattle from people like that, they just executed you. They were like, Fuck. as like a don't do it type of thing, like a discouragement, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in our country, <laughs> how, how do we handle cattle ranchers? Or how do we handle... I don't know. What time frame are we in? Right? I don't know. Viking times? Yeah. Medieval times, thousands of years ago, let's say. 2,000 okay. years ago. Yeah. There's definitely cattles. Cattle yeah. shit like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm saying, do you guys execute people? I kind of have to, right? I think so. Is there any country that I doesn't have a so. death penalty? That's a good question. That's a good question. Lord Justin, I haven't met one country. <laughs> a one country. I've never them. seen one. One kingdom. That doesn't have a few heads on the on the walls. All right, because I guess to what degree do you need that that discouragement, that level of discouragement? People are going to do shit anyway. People are going to be give a fuck anyway. But the amount of people that would enter into that give a fuck category would be a lot less. I guess presumably if you had some sort of penalty or some sort of negative ramifications for being a piece of shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like being a good parent. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I've had this I like in, in my mind of before, but it's like being a king or being a president, whatever, running some shit, running a country, running a kingdom. It's like being a father or it's like being a a, a parent. You know, like you have to, like, how do you raise children to be independent and wise enough to make their own decisions without being too much of a tyrant and controlling their every move? 
and being like unjustly whatever you know yeah hard that's a great it's, it's a fine balance it's, it's a fine balance you can't just let your kids do anything all the time of course not it's like ah i can't be doing that you can't just do what they want to do all the time you can't be doing that and they gotta get along with other people so you need to encourage that type of behavior and at least have a negative association of signs of other types of behavior or social interactions treating themselves treating others it's a fine balance, but I think there needs to be ramifications. There needs to be there needs to be a fucking belt. There needs to be a beheading. I agree. <laughs> I agree. People need to feel safe, like the regular people. They uh, they need to feel like we're doing something about that. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Otherwise, they'll just get. Some, the, why, why wouldn't they just take someone else? Like I think we want them to like us or, or want our reign. Yeah, I think Jordan Peterson's. So that's how I run my country. <laughs> Some people don't give a fuck. Yeah, right. I think he's mentioned, uh, I guess, the need for like a justice system or like a properly implemented justice system as far as like action reaction or cause and effect and how we deal with it. Because then it's like, yeah, if you just like kill one of my family, then I come back and kill two of your family. Then you come back and kill four of my family. Then we come back and kill, you know what I'm saying? It just never stops. Right. It never stops. Right. So yeah, I guess ideally the justice system would alleviate the need for or the... Uh, Inclination towards vengeance, revenge. Justice. Yeah, making your own justice. Right. We need to stem, handle it through us. We need to outsource that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I think that some crimes are probably worth... Uh, well, we could just banish them. Banish the crime or, or the person? Yeah. You've been banished. <laughs> <laughs> Exiled. <laughs> yeah. Just kick him out of the city. Right. But if that's murder, you know, that might be murder anyways because you're, you know, they're going to die in the wilderness. Yeah, we'll see. But then they're just going to go be murderous fucks with the, whoever else they go with, right? I guess hypothetically. What if it's a crime of passion? You know? Right, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the context matters. The, the, the situation, the circumstances. Yeah, like. Everything that plays into it, the context is important. The brother sold half the farm and the other brother killed him. Because he, it meant that the whole farm was going to go away. And it's like, you've been charged with killing your brother. Mm -hmm. Should we execute that guy? Yeah, our guy comes in, sees his wife cheating on him. That's a crime of, crime of passion, right? Is that, is that what sure. that's deemed? Yeah. Right? It, I think it also kind of has to be like not premeditated at all. So if he just like picks something up and does it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a crime of passion. But if you like... Went and bought a gun. What a lawyer. What a lawyer that made that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, right? Someone probably went ham uh -huh. on defending this guy. So he's like, ah, oh, shit, I need to, I need to fucking come with out of my ass with this one. <laughs> You've been passionate about anything in your life. It probably was just the case. The guy's like, I lost control. It's empathy. Like, or, I didn't yeah, even know what I was doing. I just grabbed it. blacked him. out. Yeah. He's like, it sounds like... <laughs> Passion to me. You're blinded by love. <laughs> love is blinding and is blind itself. Can you blame him? Can you blame yeah. the man? He's in love. <laughs> it's got free, dog. <laughs> Crazy. Terrible, terrible. But this is this is these are the questions. Someone has had to think about this shit. Yeah, this is how society is made. We need justice systems. We need something in place to make the people feel safe who aren't committing the crimes. Because if there's no repercussions for anyone doing fucked up shit, then that's I don't know, it's just scary. Context matters. Context, Context matters. matters. I remember when I was 100%. in sixth grade, I got into a fight at school. Scratch that, seventh grade. Okay. Okay. Middle school scrap. Where I went to school, there was, on average, I would say 0. 0.7 fights per day. <laughs> just in that locker room. About like four fights a week. Four or five fights a week. Yes. There, we'd have weeks where there was a fight a day, for mm -hmm. sure. Because I remember at one point thinking to myself, this is a... a well, real moment in my life, I was like, oh, yeah, everybody in this room is going to have to fight someday because everybody eventually fights. It's just different every day. Mm -hmm. and, and eventually, I was say, yeah, it's different. It was, or it wasn't, there was our usual suspects. I feel like there was repeat offenders. I mean, there was a lot of people that once it got started were basically like pulling out money and starting to like bet on stuff or like they'd start rubbing the dude's shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit, it's going down today. You're up, baby. Let's go. It's your turn. <laughs> this is seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. How old? So how old? Like what? 12, 13? Yeah, it was 13. Uh -huh. I could have been 14. I could have been eighth grade, but I think it was like seventh, eighth grade, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, 
Fucking criminy, dude. Yeah, man. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, one of these days. It's yeah, this, the, all these happen. All these fights happened where, like, in like the gym locker room. For the most part, yeah. Okay, I heard. Because it, because it, when I was in eighth grade, it got to the point that there was like police sometimes, like a security guard. Policing. Yeah, policing. <laughs> and then if you got into a fight and it was just like on school grounds, like you'd be like getting fucking tackled, maybe even getting arrested. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And. uh that's crazy. What was the principal's? <laughs> what was the principal's mindset? I'm sure. To, or I'm, I'm wondering during this. I don't know. She drove a Mercedes. It was kind of tight. Damn. Yeah. She didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I remember she always had this red Mercedes parked she out front. She didn't give a motherfuck. Yeah. So she I'm, was. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm joshing. Joshua. It was a weird situation. She was like a five nine white lady in her forties driving a red Mercedes, and this school was kind of in the hood. I mean. Fights every day. It was a smaller town, so it was like the only really school you could go to. Only middle school, like in the, in the town. There was a public and a private school. Okay. Most people went to the public school. Private school is kind of small. So yeah, it, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's kind of a. It wasn't like a alcove of like really terrible area that some places have. It was just like the only school they had. You know what I'm saying. Mm. So, anyways, locker room was a little bit safer. You know, contain that fight. Okay. Fight. Let them fight. <laughs> Break it up. Get in the showers. No one says anything. No one says a word. Hey, where are the coaches during all of this? Where's the teachers? Where's the authority? L- fucking letting us get sharper. <laughs> Making men out of those boys. <laughs> boys to men. Boss. Boss. No, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. I was trying to think of what that Penn State's coach name was. But uh, not, no Sandusky, but... Uh, <laughs> They were uh, throwback. Sometimes they were letting us duke it out. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what the fuck? I don't know, man. Where's the supervision? Where's the regular vision? <laughs> I don't know, man. So Christ. At some point, I get into this. Uh, I don't know what it is. So it's your turn. It's your time. Yeah. It's been enough weeks. Enough fights have passed. Right. Was there beef between you and this other guy? Or sorry, what were we gonna say? I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> no. Well, it was just weird because this guy was kind of my friend. His name okay. was Jeremy. He was also another white kid. Okay. He, uh, I remember like between seventh and eighth grade, I like coached him up on how to play basketball because I played in seventh grade and he wanted to play in eighth grade. So like we were cool, I think. But mm-hmm. then uh, he was like talking shit to me in the locker room. And then I was just like, I don't know. For just, what? I don't remember. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Just like for social points? Yeah. 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 yeah you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. So we'll, like, simple. Social jockey hierarchy. It was like after jockey. practice, and I can't remember if he was talking shit about my like performance or like uh, X Y Z. I don't know. I don't even fucking remember. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but enough that I just started. I was just like, whatever, bro, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then he just like was like backed up and was like, yeah, fuck him. It just starts kind of going off to everybody, and I was like, fuck you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever. And he's like, oh yeah, fuck me, I'll fuck you. And I was like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? This dude like wants to fucking fight me or something, you know? Uh-huh. And I remember just being like, oh yeah, this is fucking, I guess it's my turn. And it's fucking Jeremy. This isn't bad at all. I can fucking whoop Jeremy's ass. <laughs> just... <laughs> Thank God. Thank God I'm fighting this guy. <laughs> a bitch. <laughs> it could be way worse. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There was like, I had a worst fears scenarios playing out sometimes. Where uh-huh. It's like, that guy's going to fucking kill me. <laughs> no. Okay. So whatever, dude, we like fight, right? And then uh, I remember just like pushing him and then like maybe he hit me in the body or something like that. And then I just kind of like wail on him like one because like he's like falling backwards. And then I wail on him a couple times and I kind of just like get out of there. Like, that's it. You see what I'm saying? That's it. Whooped his ass, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> Nobody say fucking anything. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And then I'm like leaving. And I don't even really remember feeling a high about that. I just remember feeling nervous. I was like, I... in trouble? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then out of nowhere, on the way to lunch, from the gym to the fucking lunchroom, there's like a space outside and there's like an ag shop, like where they were wood weld and stuff like that. Mm. And this like outside little unit in this little, like, it was like in the back of the school too. It wasn't like a courtyard or anything like that. It was just like parking lot kind of mm. from the gym to the where this lunchroom was going to be. And then he just runs up to me and like from behind, I didn't even know he was coming, pushes me onto like my face. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then starts like punching me in like the back of the head or like kind of. And I'm like, yo. And then I just like roll over and then 
get him like kind of like on, on top of him and then roll him over onto his back. And then I'm like, don't want to punch him in the back of the head. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of like punch him in the back a couple times and then just like stand up and then just start walking to lunch. I'm just walking to lunch, bro. Fuck that. I'm out of there. <laughs> Shit. But then they grab me and take me to the office and then like call my dad and they're like basically saying I need to be suspended from school and go to ISS for the rest of the year because they have a no policy on fighting at the school. Get the fuck out of so here. So they're going to remove me from school and send me to fucking just ISS Gotta school. Gotta keep it in the locker room, kid. Bro. Gotta keep it in the locker Jeremy, room. Jeremy, you fucking asshole. You prick. You broke the sacred vow. Okay, but this was a sick moment in my life, right? Because okay. my dad comes in and like, I don't even know what's going on. I'm just sitting with the assistant principal. I'm fucking crying like a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I didn't even want to fight him. I'm getting suspended. <laughs> and then uh, my dad's like talking to the assistant principal. And the assistant principal's like, yeah, we have no, uh, we have uh, no policy. N- yeah. Zero tolerance Zero policy. Zero tolerance policy. There it is. Mm-hmm. So like, there's not really anything I can do. And I'm like, my dad's like, you're telling me. That this kid right here, who's like sobbing right now, because he didn't <laughs> want to fight this guy, doesn't want to get suspended. He's on your AB honor roll, plays every sport. Uh, this dude right here, who fought with one of his teammates on the team, like you think that this guy deserves to go to suspension, like outside of the school for the rest of the year, like can't go to his classes anymore, like nothing. And then he was like, I mean, it, I, I agree with you that it feels like that maybe wouldn't be the best solution here. And, I'm, and then he's like, okay, then like, why do you have a zero intolerance policy? Like, and my dad just starts saying, I can, I can name you reasons why someone might get into a physical altercation with someone else at this school. And there's no way that they should be removed. Like, what if someone's self-defending themselves? What if um, they've been bullied all year long and then they finally just like don't know how to deal with it because they haven't talked to a counselor and then it, it results in like a physical altercation? Like, what if um, a teacher is harassing a student and they don't know how to talk about it and then it turns into a physical altercation? Like, are, are you also going to kick those kids out of school for the rest of the year? And he's like, well, no, probably not in those situations. He's like, so you don't have a zero tolerance policy then. Mm-hmm. Like, you say you do, but you don't. And then the, the assistant principal's like, hold on, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to, I'm going to grab the principal, see if I can get her um, and just see what she thinks about the situation. Mm-hmm. And then the principal comes back in and the principal's like, okay. What we want to do here is we we would like to spend, suspend Matthew for three days. Just stay at home. Come back to school in three days. And um, we'll talk about uh, maybe signing some paperwork saying that if we get anything else the rest of the year that we're definitely going to have to talk about outside school suspension or something like that. And uh, my dad was like, okay, great. Sounds good. And then we walked out. And then we were driving home. And I remember just being like. That was fucking crack, dude. Holy shit. That was crazy. That's just words, bro. Using your words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My dad was like, heard the story and he was just like, didn't even know what to do. He was like, oh yeah, you can just like play Xbox, whatever. It's cool. Don't, don't worry. Don't do it again. You're chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't get caught. That, that, that was like a kind of fucked me up moment because like the same way a lawyer someday was like, what's a crime of passion? Your honor. What do we do here, Your Honor? Come on, what are we doing are here? Are you a married man, Your Honor? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You come home, your wife's getting plowed. <laughs> like a field in the spring. <laughs> field, field, yeah, field in the summertime. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like uh, it just showed me that, like, I don't know, man, your back's pinned or something like that. You can fucking use some words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wiggle out of, like, and you can say no to a no. My dad was like, no. Zero tolerance? Bullshit. (laughs) You can tolerate this. You can tolerate this. (laughs) Real talk. Mm. That shit was cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I guess we were talking about punishment, or how do we get onto this? Zero tolerance policies. Okay. That's what I'm getting to. Okay, 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 okay. For our kingdoms. Context matters. Yes. Right. There we go. Who the person is. What happened? Why? What the relationship is? Yes. What's the history here? What's the movie? If I've been watching enough of the movie, I know what I want to have happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know what I deem to be justice or you know, like yeah. what I'm looking for in my mind. I hadn't even gotten to my second chance yet. I feel like if I fucked up again, then it'd be like, okay, this is your last chance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I still have two chances. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> right? As far as movies go, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. My third strike. You play baseball. You American? Yeah. Why did we adopt? It's one, two, three. A fucking baseball one, rule. Two, three strikes and you're out of the ball game. Whatever the fuck the song is. But um, why did that become a presupposition for our judicial system? 
Like some some it's, guy. It's a good rule of thumb, I guess. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson was like, "That's how we should run things." Right there. <laughs> One, two, the third time, get him out of there. You're out. That's the last. I mean, what are we going to do? Watch him fail again? Yeah. The <laughs> fourth time? Fuck out of here. Mm-mm. Not my watch. It, but rule of thumb, you're saying. Yeah. Or it seems maybe like a maybe it's like a universal thing. Or I think Jordan Peterson has mentioned also that as well. Like as far as like using three, a three count of a, an occurrence of something happening three times for to like justify or maybe to suggest that it's more than just mere coincidence or happenstance. Right. You know, if it happens once, a lot of things just happen once. But if it happens twice, it's like, okay, I noticed it the first time. I'm seeing it the second time. I guess he was he was saying this to use this kind of reference in, uh, I guess in, uh, I guess through psychology or whenever he's doing uh, like social work or people who are in that field. Uh, or I guess if you're trying to talk to somebody about their behavior, it's like I know you like one time is one time. Two times I noticed it the first time, and the second time it's also making itself apparent to me. But then the third time, it's like, okay, no, 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 okay. This is like a, this is a a trend now. If it happens twice, it's gonna happen three times. And it's gonna continue, probably. Whatever, hypothetically. On on the receiving end too, even my own spirit, if someone tells me I've done something three times in a row, I feel like it's super easy for me to be like, Maybe you're right. Like, even if even if I disagree, the maybe you're right, like how could you deny someone that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. That's but something. the context matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It depends on the accusation, right? Like if, of course. if I'm getting, you know, told that I've been staring at women's butts and then three, the three separate times, like I know exactly what we're talking about and I remember the moment and I know that I wasn't staring at that girl's butt. It's like that context matters for just because you have three instances of a uh, behavior doesn't necessarily mean I'm guilty of the accusation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. Through your own subjective lens. That's who knows what's example, really but... going on. <laughs> yeah, true, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I saw these things happen. And it's like, well, like you may have saw them, but it wasn't necessarily in line with the truth of like the narrative of what's actually happening and what my actual intentions were. Right. You know. Yeah, the, she had Juicy written on her butt, and I couldn't quite read that. And what I was trying to do was read the words because it was confusing to my brain. I wasn't trying to stare at the butt. That's a joke. But it's also an example of what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah. If that were true. <laughs> yeah. Come on. The fuck? No, I'm just saying, though. Like, you don't really know. It's so hard to tell what's actually going on. Like, it's hard to think of an example just on the fly. But things all the time could look like it's something, but not really be that thing. Because you're not in that moment actually doing it. You're just witnessing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But I think there, there's, there might be something there with, like, three times. mm Especially with like a with like winks or like things like that. That's where I like it. Some, yeah. That's where I like it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Once that's I, it. That third wink be hitting. That third wink hit. Because I'm like, for the third time you see something and it's like, man, I was just thinking about that. Man, I was just thinking about. Oh shit. Okay. If it happens again, I'm gonna be tripping out. And then sometimes it happens that third time and you be tripping out. You're like whoa. <laughs> yeah, I like Walls. it there. It's whoa. I started to wonder if three was a like a because three's in the Bible. It's, it's a, a holy Trinity, number, it's right? A holy, yeah, it's, it's a magic number, I think, or has it has associations? You know, they say deaths happen in threes. Yeah, right. What's that? Third time's the charm. What's that? There we go. <laughs> See, <laughs> come I, I, on. I've been pondering this shit. Oh, come on, so ponder away. What 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 are we talking about when we're talking about this three? What is it that's this like? Because uh, the Trinity in the Bible also three is not like just a holy number. It's like one of the biggest like. God presented himself three ways. And so whenever... Yeah, the, the three, six, nine, or like those are... I've, I've heard Tesla say that the, the laws of the universe are found within those numbers or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I heard Terrence Howard say Tesla said that. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's three, and that's three, three times. <laughs> what are we talking about? What are we talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> we talking you know what about? I'm so... The Trinity. Two's, a, two's like a special number as well because it's like... Whether two or more are gathered, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. There's something about having two, a duality. Yin and yang is a two a, a duality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Two sides of a coin. Yeah. So two is also this like special number. And then three is something else. Like maybe like the world runs in dualities, but spiritualities presents itself in like a... Trinities. A trinity. Yeah. A trinities. It could be like it's crazy because I'm like there's no fucking I can't Google at this point, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we're getting into space, right? <laughs> Astrophysics, yeah, we're getting but, out there. But I think there's something to it. I think there's something to um, why, the, especially when I just realized that the third time's the charm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's so many times that we use that as like a, some kind of 
moniker of yeah validator or gives it some extra meaning some extra we assign it extra meaning if it happens a third time i guess i've also heard that 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 happens in threes as well that's a that's another common phraseology i'm not i guess i've never really empathized with that in any fashion or form has it like crossed you or hate you in any way in your life um um I'm trying, there was never a time I can't be like my cousin and my uncle and my cat all died on mm. like Christmas like 2005. I, there wasn't a time like that. Yeah, no. But there was definitely there. like when um, Aunt Carol passed, and then my mom had another friend that passed, and my mom was like, "Oh yeah, I'm just like a little bit worried just because they say death happens in threes." You know what I'm saying? I remember being like, "What? <laughs> we gotta be what worried someone's gonna die." <laughs> you know what I'm why are you why is th- why are you bringing that into the ether? <laughs> Well, we're thinking like that. I don't know. That happens in threes. I'm not sure where that who where that originate. Who the who was like? I've seen it enough times to say that this is a saying or to create this saying. It probably came from writing. That happens in three. Oh yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. Maybe that's like killing answer. characters off in like in plays or scripts. Yeah, that's what like I was that. thinking. Was Shakespeare plays? Okay, maybe okay, like okay. people die in threes, and maybe that okay. became like a some a phrase people adopted. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, but I don't know if that's right, but that's where my first thought went. But that's also, writing itself, like, are we not existing in writing? We are. Is writing not a reflection of writing? We are. You know? It is. <laughs> <laughs> tis, tis, my lord. <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, if, if it's a tr- some, what trips me out is if Shakespeare taps into that intimation that death happens in threes, then he writes it, then its success could mean its validity. It could. I'm not saying it does. But if something moves people, if art moves someone, mm-hmm. maybe it's because it's true. Or maybe it's just because it's convincing or interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Playing into our psychology of viewership, something we like as like a, like something that salivates our mind up here is when death happens in threes. And that's why they do it, not because it's universally true. Mm-hmm. It's hard to know these things. Yeah, because I, uh, I don't know. I can't, re- I can't recall any instances in my life where I felt that truth or, you know, say I felt a truth within that phrase that we've, we've been saying for a long time. My my Grammy and my uncle and my mom passed in my childhood, and those were three super influential people in my life. Mm. I don't I don't group that as like a thing often, except we were trying to like group it right now. Yeah. Um. But I remember thinking like when my Grammy and uncle had passed, I remember thinking like, yo, it's kind of fucked. Like they were like I really loved them. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And they're like years apart. Um. Yes, my Grammy passed, no, it was right around like um, 15, 16 times. So um, my Grammy passed when I was like 15 or 16, and then my uncle died kind of suddenly, like same kind of age, like right around there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe it was within like two years span. Okay. And I remember being like, that shit's fucked. Like, this is going to sound fucked up, right? Okay. But I was like, why'd you kill those characters off? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like some of my first brushes with death in my family were like ripping people that were super influential on me. Mm. And I always was like, that's ass. You know what I'm saying? And then my mom passing like five years later, it's like one of the, the most influential people. That's the on biggest me. one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, it, I could think about it like that. I could, but I don't really very often think about like death happens in threes. Look at my life. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Interesting. How, how are you on this? Oh, yeah. Threes. <laughs> it's like threes. Threes. That's what we're talking about. It's a strange thing. Magic numbers. Think about anything else with threes. Is there any other phraseology, commonality, universal sayings? Threes, threes. I don't know. I, I remember definitely watching a video. It was, it was years ago, though. But it was about like the Tesla kind of going into the philosophy behind that. I forget entirely what it was about. But I remember being like, oh, shit. This is trippy, y'all. <laughs> this shit's kind of trippy, y'all. I guess there was also a... What was it? I don't know. It was a whole bunch of kind of like scientific math talk angles, like splitting, like a, or having like a like a triangle and then a square and then like just do, adding more sides to it. I don't know. It was, it was a whole thing. Just like shapes and scientific abstract sort of like quantum level thinking is where like that kind of tied into... Huh. Tesla was on that shit back in the day, day. I think that's the code for... The quantum? Yeah. Like, if 
God just used English and was like, yeah, I want things to happen in threes because it makes sense because of X, Y, Z. Like quantum mechanics will be like, let me like input that into the universe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I think we can get back to the raw code of, of that, of those things happening. Like we're like quantum entanglement's real. Like I can prove it. It's like, but I, that's a mechanism for something, but we, it's hard to just know what the mechanism is. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Unless you get Jordan Peterson saying, I know some of these mechanisms and he's like tearing up telling you and you're like that's the mechanism that's the axiom that's that's i know that's the verbal reason why that thing is happening all the time okay yeah and so the verbal reasons are more executable it's more under like we can actually use that in our life you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. that's just that's what i think about quantum mechanics and like fucking uh no that's the word quantum mechanics yeah i think that's just like string theory and all of that like physics and stuff like that on that level Mm -hmm. That, like, explains to some degree our existence on this earth, like, the way that I talk about energy and attraction works and, like, uh, how your thoughts become reality and how your reality can change, like, drastically from, like, year to year. Overnight. Overnight. And then that would change your biology, too. And, like, all of those, like, how you ended up, where you ended up. Like, dude, I find this weird cosmic connection between um fucking... Yo, I'm trying to do this for you right now. Uh, San Antonio is a city, and there's another city that I just feel like it's cosmically connected to. Denver. Uh, it might be Denver, bro, truthfully, <laughs> which would have me tripping. What's the area code in Denver? I don't know. Uh, I can't tell you. We can find out real quick. But you think there's a, a city that's quantumly entangled with San Antonio? Maybe it's Detroit is <clears throat> what I'm thinking of. Or how so? What, what brings this? Because... Here we go. I think it's Detroit. What's the area code for Detroit, first of 313. all? 313. What's the zip code of Detroit? Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Let me see. I'm sure there's a whole bunch. I guess let me see what they start with. Because I guess all Texas is 7, 8, right? right. 7, 8, whatever. Yeah. Wherever, depending on where you are after that. Uh, Detroit zip code. I could have sworn that there's a Detroit zip code that ends in 210 that Big Sean references at one point. Okay, I guess no. I was thinking, I was thinking like area code, right? Three one three is like the Eminem. Everybody in the three one three. Yeah, that's fire. <laughs> that's fire. Mm-hmm. Zip codes there start with uh, four eight, so four eight one twenty seven, four eight two zero one, four eight two zero two, four eight two zero three. Maybe it was four eight two zero one. He said forty eight two ten. Forty eight two ten. Yeah. Okay, so Big Sean says he's from forty eight two ten. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yes. And then how do I turn forty eight two one? It's Wayne County. That's great. I've heard him say something about that before, right? Wayne County? Key Wayne. Maybe that's where we got it from. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Wayne County? Yeah. I'm, I think I've heard him say that bar before. Okay, you with me? Yeah, I'm with Dude, you. because I almost let it go. I almost like maybe I'm tripping. Nah. nah continue. <laughs> so, the, Big Sean's from the county in Detroit. 78210, but that's the area code here. 48210. 48210. We're the 210. I was living in area code 78210 not that long ago. Okay. Okay, okay, you're with me. I'm with you. Hardworking people. Coach Trailer reminds me a lot of Coach uh, Lions head coach. Campbell? Coach Dan Campbell. Mm-hmm. I, the similarities, the gruff in their voice, <laughs> the southern boy in them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Dude, they're just like, when I, what, because I was like, Trailer's like a freaking Jameer Gibbs version of Dan Campbell. What? what, what? <laughs> What do you mean? He's like a little bit lighter, a little speedier, a little quicker to the point, more composed, a little more hands on with it. Like he's a little more like, like a not. He's not a Dan Campbell light, but he's like a more like speedy, athletic. Hits the whole run and gets out of there. Okay, Campbell could take more hits, I think, probably. But he's a big boy. (laughs) Yeah, that's a big boy. He's a tight end. I'm pretty sure. I just think I think saying that's funny. Saying someone is the Jameer Gibbs of somebody else. Them. (laughs) Well, that's the Aaron Rodgers of. Roger Goodell's, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he got an arm on him. <laughs> He's slanging. It's a it's a meme on the internet. But uh, dude, okay, so cosmic entanglement though. Yes. Why does Dan Campbell work there? Dan Campbell fucking works there, and Jeff Trailer fucking works here. Like they have so much success since they both entered those roles. U- roles, uh-huh. and then I think just just to me when I'm thinking about this cosmic entanglement. To think that the same archetypical character entered a cosmically entangled cities that are somehow maybe archetypically sim- similar. I don't know because I haven't, I haven't been to Detroit like that. Mm-hmm. But like, and then both of them are also having like a turn of success from like a middling to like lower stand with this archetypical character. Mm. It just feels like they're, 
and I think this happens to people across the world too. Like you're going through something similar because you are something similar because there's only so much coding for these quantum mechanics to to run this whole fucking thing that we're doing. <laughs> it's, a, it's beyond complicated. Super complicated. Beyond my comprehension. But I think that you can see these like ties between places sometimes or like similar storylines kind of playing out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's rare because we wouldn't really, we know if it was like, this is just, this state's demographics are just like this state's demographics. Like they, they what do you call it? Fucking voted. Mm. They, uh, what happens when you make someone president? Like you're uh, elected. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, they elected the same type of people across the board. They had the same laws across the board. Their crime is the same. Like we would see that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. On the, in the numbers. In the numbers. But there's some similarities for sure across the board. Yeah. And there's I think there. There's, there might be something between San Antonio and Detroit. The same way that I feel connected to Big Sean. I was going to say, it might, it might be because we're connected to Big Sean, you and I. You know what I'm saying? So because you and I are so entangled with him. We think that, or that maybe there are connections that present themselves that would help validate that thought or to help reinforce that thought. But I've definitely felt entangled to to him for a minute. When he's like, yeah, because he's going, when he's going through shit or when he's, whatever. Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe in his career of like time, like the timing is really like how, how you would identify all of this shit. It's yeah. like the timing of things and when you notice something and like maybe the timing of when he's like releasing music or whenever he's doing what he's doing. Becoming, becoming a dad, growing up in his own right. It's like we're, we're kind of in that same entanglement or experiencing maybe similar life change or transmutation of what's going on in our stories at the same time that he's feeling it as well. But I think that's a real thing going on. I, 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 what is that connection, right? I think that we're mm-hmm. trying to do the same mm-hmm. thing. Maybe we're inspired by the same alien idea. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're we're going down the same trajectory. Or if you had to paint what he his life story is, and you had to paint what our life story is, you, maybe you'd use the same color palette because it's like a similar arc that we're going through. Mm-hmm. Maybe we all have a hundred karma lives we go through to learn a hundred different character arcs, and this is, but we're both on ninety seven, like, and that's kind of crazy. Something like that. Something like that. You know what right. I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. that what, what on the level that. I tend to lean with it is that like if Detroit and San Antonio are two cosmically connected cities where this archetypical person is supposed to go be able to do the thing that would throughout time perpetuate into the the thing that they need to learn would happen there. It's not far fetched for me to think that my my energy, my frequency, my being was gravitationally pulled to San Antonio through my life story to get me here. So that I could be in the place where I'm in the churning of the thing. Just like Big Sean was able to be born into the city where he was able to be churned into the thing that would make him the thing. And I think that like that's not far. That That's the gravity of that I think is like gravity dropping a pen. Like we're pulled places. We're like drawn to things. Mm-hmm. Like we we're you're choosing everything you do all the time. But it's you're, are you what are you like? What are your choices? Are they free will? Are they inspired? Yeah. Are, are they biology? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, where's the final decision come from? Right. Why do you want the things you want? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's a crazy. So, anyways, when I think about like the when I think about Nikola Tesla and quantum entanglement and uh, quantum theory, astrophysics, string theory, all that shit. To me, that's that's what that shit looks like. It's not numbers. It's like how these divine explanations verbally for the craziness that is the way that life works, why deaths happen in threes. It's like, yeah, I, I think it's something like that, you know? Yeah, right in, into the code Yeah, of what's going on here. Right. Maybe it helps us see the code Yeah, that, at the quantum level. That, that, we know it's there. We can observe it, but we can't see it legitimately. It's like, there's, I think that's like, yeah, part of the code that literally is building our shit. It's kind of scary. It's, it's trippy once you get into the quantum level of things. There's definitely like 100% science on all of this shit. Like the particle versus the wave when someone's observing something versus not observing it. Crazy shit. Our, our observation creates reality. Like, what? <laughs> it's unexplainable. But there is, I think, so maybe there is some magical referencing or ties to some numbers or numerology. A lot of people put stock in numerology. Big number of people. I've seen a guy on TikTok talking a lot about it. He's talking about Michael Jordan, like popularizing 23. I guess like the first 
because Michael Jordan, I guess, was born in on I think February seventeenth, something like that, in sixty three. So he's like the first the first number of your birthday. So for him it'd be two, I guess, and then the last number of your birthday, twenty or of, of the year you were born, rather. So the two and the three. I'm, I'm not sure what he was saying exactly about that, but well, I guess it's like a popular number for you. So mine's ninety three <laughs> versus eighty four. Yeah, I was number eight and number four in high school and basketball in high school. Boom. Well, it's crazy. I'm 90, 93. Born in 93. <laughs> September 3rd or September 8th, 93. It's a Trinity number. I mean. Come on, nine and three. That might be just like a triangle shaped like this in the fucking geometric realm of looking at reality. <laughs> that creates some kind of fucking illumination. Mm. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you, bro. Yeah, but I guess so. That I, I, either way, that guy is really, really big into. I'm sure if if you've you you may know the, the person I'm talking about if you've seen him or come across him on TikTok sometimes. But he's always talking about that shit. He's like people born on the fifth, the the fourteenth, the twenty third. Like they're gonna are they, they're gonna be X Y Z sort of explanation. Like people who are born on the eighth, the six or the seventeenth, the twenty sixth. It's like those people are gonna be exhibit this kind of characteristics. I was like, how much truth is there to that? Maybe he's like just tapped into the fucking coding of the world, maybe a little bit. Maybe or maybe it's just true for him. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to how to take that and do with it extra stuff. I guess it, we we went with, with 38 for our own numerology purposes. It might be genius. It might be genius because if they're tapped into something truer than true, you don't want to be tapped into that. Of course I do. Of course I love to. Then t- these numbers just manifest themselves, bro. Like that's the thing. Do you think everyone has like a like a lucky number or like a, a feeling about numbers in that sort of way? Well, I'm tripping that nine three is your that yeah, that's number. my Jordan number, but then three is your number number, yeah, which would be the bridge between those. And I think I don't, my mom had a number which was two one four, uh-huh. and it just presented itself periodically, often stood out. What was that in for her? Like, what do you mean? What uh, was it to her? Yeah, yeah, like like two one four. What was that? I don't know. Like February fourteenth, or just like a. Usually people just have like either one or two digit numbers. That one's kind of weird, right? She had a three digit number. Yeah. 214. Like uh-huh. a time. Or I guess that's Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not sure it's what. love. It, maybe, yeah. Maybe. I, I, I don't even think she knew. It's like <laughs> the, my stepdad and I were talking about it later after she had passed. And we were just, he was just like, it's just like in the, the matrix code. Like you asked maybe him about the, it? Like we were talking about it somehow colloquially. Uh-huh. I'm not sure how it came up. But he was saying that it was like if her program was like a matrix code, maybe it was just like the last three letters of the code, and it just like manifests itself in the file all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like hmm. it's just it just seems like these numbers are our identity and in the programming. Like it's not even really something that we can help us very much, or it could, but it's just there regardless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's one of the more logical explanations for why astrology hits sometimes. Is that they tapped into the truth of you're born in this month with this moon and it creates this personality type. Right. And then we also have like a calendar of when personality types are going through the archetypical season, what the result is for that personality type right. is usually. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they're just like, dude, sometimes I'm like, it's deep. things are so trippy in my life. And I'm like, call my sister and I'm like, yo, are we going through something like astrological or something? Because... <laughs> What's like, going on in the stars? Yeah, just talk. Well, I'm looking for something. And she's like, clack, 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 clack. Yeah, so it turns out we're actually in the last 16 days going through this thing called like a Lion's Gate, or there's like a major retrograde with something called a Lion's Gate attached to it. Okay. <laughs> and um, on August 8th, you'll be able to really push through that. And if you're able to get through the Lion's Gate, you'll be like very good. But it's going to kind of suck leading up to that point. And I'm just like, okay, okay, cool. I don't really want to apply a lot of legitimacy to what you're saying because I'm a Christian, but within that time frame, we end up like getting funding and starting our own business, like no cap. Mm. And then my my best friend Julian, on the other flip side, is like, hey man, I was talking to this girl about uh, August 8th and all this, and you should just make a wish at like 8 o'clock on August 8th, and that shit's going to like have a lot of power to it for sure. 8-8, eight, eight. And I'm just 8-8-8. Eight, like, eight, eight. Dude, what are you... 38 what are you talking to me what is he going just brought on? that up under uh, on his own accord we're walking into the sauna get the fuck out of here I swear to god <laughs> get the fuck out of here julian I'm not even... i love you no, get the fuck get out of here out, and come back so i can tell you get the fuck out again <laughs> like what? that's crazy see like what the fuck is that 
so like because yeah, now we're getting now we're tapping into some weird abstract realms of talk of thought and theory of like numerology and astrology and like zodiac signs and the alignment of things and the timing of things is a fucking that's always been hitting me or not always but you know what I'm saying people I've been mentioning that for a long time now the timing of things is everything so it's just like what the fuck's going on with all of those all of those are kind of in reference to time right like like the numerology comes off of like your birthday and that's like and so is the zodiacs or whatever the fuck the astrology type of shit going on right with your moons and the mercury retrogrades the fucking drake raps about that mercury retro- retrogrades is what i was made for or whatever the fuck he says yeah know. yeah when the that's what i feel like happens on a retrograde <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta sit there and go, <laughs> yeah like push fuck, through <laughs> pushing through the g-force <laughs> your fucking brain's just like oh jesus or your fucking spiritual being is going through some shit yeah don't make a bad choice don't fall under pressure don't mm-hmm. arise to the occasion arise to the occasion yeah set yourself up set yourself up this shit's gonna hit this shit's gonna hit i think we're tapped i'm not sure how much to tap oh, sorry what are you gonna say that's that's it though we're, it's so crazy how i was like it makes me feel like uh, and we turned it into words to express that feeling that i feel when he says retrograde mercury is what i was made for it's like i feel like that's what he's like describing is like the capacity to do that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but yeah first of all we're talking about this you described it so well and articulately crazy yeah. mis- crazy ideas i think that's what kings would have to talk about we would have to talk about all of this shit just to be like what do you know about fucking people yeah what's going on do you know about magic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what magic do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you would just to just to know, you know what I'm saying? Like you'd have to ask, bro. Because who else? Yeah, dude. So so yeah. But then back to talking about these, you know, I feel like it's maybe just a simply a formula to create story. It's just like we've got like twelve roaming modifiers that are the months. And then we've got like a, a roaming 16 month calendar that plays into the 12 month calendar that is like what's happening to the characters that we've created by the months. And then there's special events that happen based on crazy years and numerology within the years too. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like that could just create all of the story that we ever, it creates the magnetism. It's like how many people are living this story out like right next door and we don't even know. Like they're starting a business, they're blah, blah, blah this and that. Mm-hmm. Same kind of time frame, similar experience. Probably a lot. Right? Mm-hmm. But we would never know. We could never know. But it might be simply that. That's why we can all look at the stars and your percentage of your thing, you can get what your 1132 final percentage output is. It's like you in one, you are 132nd of the possible things going on right now. This is probably what y'all are going through in some way or another. It might be presenting itself as like a different physical thing. But the abstract thing that's happening to all these people during this time yes. is something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, why the fuck does any of that work? <laughs> what, why, why haven't we thrown that out a long time ago? Some people have completely and entirely. They completely dismiss all that. Of course you do. But <laughs> I did too when I was. Who wouldn't? Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Right. It's, it seems ridiculous. Ridiculous. It seems ridiculous to think that just because of the. Like fucking constellation alignment and the way that stars and planets happen to be orbiting around the sun at a particular point in time, would that have anything to do with what's happening to me today? Right? It's like it, it's it's a far reach. But I'm I've I'm 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 fully stretched out. Like I'm 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 open to any and everything. I can't really say one way or another about any particular thing. Cause I'm super yeah, just being super open to the possibilities. So I can't, I can't really dismiss it. I don't put a whole lot of stock into it, but enough, enough to be open enough to let the miracle shine through. If that's, if it's going to present itself through that, right? Cause I guess, yeah, we're also kind of getting into the, what is that? Like the numerology and the astrology, all the timing of things, the placement alignment of the universe and the constellations at a one particular point in time, we're saying that that's like, Maybe I guess this kind of rounds about into what we we're talking about earlier a little bit about just the the, like the inner workings, like the quantum level of things, and like how we can't really we didn't even really know what's going on with quantum mechanics or quantum physics like fifty years ago. We had no fucking clue. So now we're like finding out more and more about this, and like maybe we're just like kind of stumbling into and being revealed the, some of the fucking universe, some of the inner workings of what's going on here. Hmm. At least that what what we can see. Hmm. So maybe that that might be like quantum physics and like astrology might be linked in that sort of way abstractly. Like they mo- may, might both be pointing towards truths about the foundation of what the fuck's going on here. Mm. And maybe like the creator created everything for us to like mm. eventually figure out and find out ourselves. Unfold itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The joy of finding out what the hell's going on mm. here. 
Because video games have to get better. It's mm. science, right? I guess it doesn't have to get better, but it just that when I talk about video games, it makes sense to me. Because like we're at a point now where like better in what way? There's like every way. Gameplay, graphics, storyline. I guess what it means is like that's what makes it cool as fuck. Like that's what makes it like that's what makes me want to stay engaged with it. It's because it the ev- the the problem with not knowing about how to make it better all the time, like being like, this is all we got. The cool thing about that is we keep getting something better along the line too. So in life, there's all this like mystery and there's all this like ambiguity and all this, we don't really know what's going on. Whole bunch of that. But getting a little bit more knowledge all the time, I think maybe like kind of stems off the feeling that it sucks that we don't know what's, because it would be kind of, cr- why aren't we like kind of hopeless all the time and like freaking out? Right, right. It's like, a miracle. Right, it's honestly, a miracle. If you're not freaking the fuck out right now, <laughs> <laughs> right? To some degree, this is a this is a wild ass thing. You know, where are you? <laughs> like, yeah, where do you think you are? It's like alive, crazy. There's a whole bunch of unknown out there. Yeah, a whole bunch, whole bunch of scary, scary unknown things going on out there. Yeah, it's, like, fuck, it's just some of it's scary because it's just unknown. And then some of it's scary because it's a fucking bear that wants to eat you mm-hmm. in the forest. Or like the, your fucking, your leader and your lead commander of your army is fucking turning against you Oof. or betraying you, whatever. All that shit. All that shit's out there. It's all just scary shit. So it's wondering, or it's a crazy wonder that we're not fucking just tripping out all the time. I agree. We got to put some simplification on this and just handle my box. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Thank God. I think part of that is is life itself unfolds more unto you all the time. Like, dude, Harry Potter, I remember reading the third Harry Potter and being like, yo, this is sick. No, I think it was the fourth Harry Potter. Yeah, that's that the one, one, That's right? where it starts getting fucking crazy cool. That's when you're like, oh, okay. They're not kids anymore. This, yeah. That's what made it, like, not worth it per se to me, but, like, it, it re-engaged me at that point. It made me feel wonder. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going bananas, yeah, the, yo. The fucking guy dies because the yeah, death is, like, introduced. I guess people die in the first couple of Harry Potters, right? Yeah, but there's something so unlocking in that book. It's thicker. It's mm-hmm. bigger. You realize that this world isn't just this anymore. And then while you're reading it, you're like, the whole time, you're like, oh, my God, like, it's I can't remember exactly what that feeling was, but I remember feeling like so thankful that it went from a straight line to like a to like a bubble out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this world is like crazy now. Yeah, yeah, it evolved for sure. I think. Yeah, Do you it think it was just the death, book. just the death that did that? Maybe not just the death. I can't. But I think it's a big. That was a big, a big turning point in like the, the children's book series to more of like a grown up. It's like okay, this shit's getting real. And he and the character who died too, you know what I'm saying, and how he died. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh shit, this is like this is happening. Like they're going to war, war for real. Like they're bad people are out there who want to kill you. Like it's going to you're going to run into those people from time to time, especially if you're going to if especially if you're going to try to be the most heroic version of yourself. They want to kill you the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh shit. Yeah. Dude, love that book. You're right. That's what it was, dude. Because it wasn't just it was. Like, it's on. Like, it's on. Voldemort was like a looming threat, and then at the yeah. very end, it, oh, it was really him. It's like, no, nah, dude, he like killed home. He's coming like, for you. He, he wanted to kill Harry, but he got out of there. Just barely, bro. Because, yeah, because old boy was with him. He wasn't supposed to be there. No. Nah. He was supposed to win and get the touch the cup and be teleported or whatever the fuck, but they both touched at the same time. Yeah, because Harry saved him or brought him with him mm-hmm. to he's win. Like, he's like, we'll both win. It's like, fuck this. Yeah. We made it. We made it through this bullshit. Yeah, dude. We both represent Hogwarts, too, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, and it ended up saving his life to some degree. Yeah. It also killed his friend. Yep. Dude, I'm saying that shit was nuts. So like- Turning I, point in the series for show. I think that's also, that also happened to me with when PlayStation 2 came out. I was just like, mm-hmm. whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, this went from being something that was kind of cool to like, holy shit, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. And I think that life does that same thing to me sometimes yes. where I go through a wormhole where I'm like, whoa, this, like getting a car was like that. You're like, oh, I can fucking go anywhere. This is yeah. crazy. Living in college was like that for the first time away from your parents. I can do anything. This is yeah. crazy. I can go to sleep and eat what I want. You know what I'm saying? And there's, all, there's moments like, you know, when you have a little bit of freaking, you get like a thousand dollars in your bank account for the first time ever. You're like, mm. I could buy anything. You're like, I'm rich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like fucking... When those doors open up 
and create the new like I remember first working at a restaurant and then I remember like understanding the restaurant fully. I was like, oh, that's so much nicer. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now I can really do what I'm doing here. You know? We uh we break through these little moments where the world like reshapes itself again. Yeah, or we have a changed perspective or a a different more broader perspective or a different way of looking at something or experiencing, interpreting something. Right. It changes it and enhances it. It gives it more depth, more resolution. You're just like, oh man, this fucking game is crazy. This game is crazy. This movie, this show, whatever we're watching here, this life, un- we're watching and experiencing life unfold. Right. That's all we're doing. We're watching the passage of time or we're in the passage of time. Or maybe we're time experiencing itself. You know what I'm saying? Personified. Yeah. It's a deep thought. Something like that. The personification of time passage. Because I guess, yeah, I love ours. To bring it back a little bit, you were talking about that that fourth book in the Harry Potter series. It's like the same way that that happens. It's like boom, boom, boom. And then like, oh, shit. We're in a, like, it reengages you, it reshapes your perspective and also changes the way you view that world of what's going on there and what's important there. It's like, oh, shit, mm. this is going down. Danger is actually here. We need to fucking get it together. Yeah. And de- defeat these motherfuckers or whatever. Defend ourselves. Watch out for this bullshit. But I think, yeah, the same way that that kind of happens in that story. And it's an incre- incredibly enticing story. Like, it's super, like, I'm not sure if it's the most popular. She was the most selling artist or whatever, most selling author in, where's she from? Britain? Uh, the England? UK. Somewhere over there? Yeah. Across the pond? Across the pond. Across the pond. She, she's a British girl. Yeah. She's, she was the most selling author over there for a long time because of that fucking, she might still be. Yeah. Because of that series. And it's super enticing, but what goes on is super cool. And we were talking about is that that fourth book is like right in the middle too. It's like one, two, three, and then five, six, seven. You know what I'm saying? Right in the middle. But life does that in and of its own self. Like the life story that you're living and everyone's living goes through moments like that where it's like, this shit's cool. Or like, this shit's crazy. This shit's in like fucking, I guess maybe it could just be events that happen in your life. But also I think I, I was more so referring to just like events that happen that shape your and change your outlook and your openness and your in, in, interfacing it changes the way you interface with the the game and like the thoughts and your actions it does i think life just has things like that if you're open to it and looking for it and willing to change and look for the the next best thing or trying to grow and expand your perspective and your awareness yeah if you want that it's there for you definitely at an infinite level you can't you, th- there's no bottom there's no bottom of the rabbit hole it goes deep forever deeper and wider exponentially deeper and wider. It gets fucking crazy out here. And maybe part of her success was that she just accu- accurately represented that in a way that was digestible. Mm-hmm. And just that's what gets fed back into the circuitry of people. Like the system itself gives us a brain that allows us to be so interested in the things that will help self-generate that experience for everybody else. Mm-hmm. So we're teach you about life through the things that you like about life. And we're just like constantly attracted, feeling through the darkness for this warm thing that we do know because it's familiar, but we don't know because it's like a virgin experience for us. Mm-hmm. I think that's what goes on. I think that's why good art is good art is when it like you can relate to it or it's a fresh perspective or it helps, it brings you a fresh perspective. Yes. Yes. 100%. Or also, I think if, if like more opportunities get presented to things, because like how does a song become number one ever? Maybe now it's easier to say scientifically how it happens, but it's like he knew a guy and then knew this guy and then bada boom, bada bing, and then it got played here, which blew it up over there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think those things, that helped J.K. Rowling somehow. Somehow I think life like met her in that coffee shop where she was writing that book and like brought all the right opportunities to get it on that mass scale because she had like a really great, well-molded truth. That was going to influence a bunch of kids in a positive way. It was like a super great thing was going to happen. Yeah, imagine the reality where it didn't happen. Right. There, might, there is, I guess, hypothetically, like multiverse theory. There's a universe out there where she didn't write it or it didn't get as big or whatever. Dude, I, I think I don't believe in the multiverse theory. Okay, what? I, I don't believe in that. Okay, how so? I've heard a bunch of people say that that's like the highest probability is that what's that's going what's going on. on. And yeah. I guess multiverse theory being, I'm not exactly sure the entire description of accurately what what it is the theory is exactly but my understanding is that it's just like there's infinite amount of universes where an infinite amount of things are happening we're in this one we're experiencing this one currently today maybe we wake up in a different one tomorrow slightly different but in these infinite amount of universes infinite amount of things that could and have happened 
everything could be exactly like the one we're in now, but just one slight change or tweak here or there. Hypothetically, it's like Mandela, the, like the Mandela effect, kind of. Yeah. Like every reality that could, like there's a million realities where you're wearing every possible color suit jacket. And it's just like this. And that's the only thing that's changed. Mm-hmm. And then there's one where it's like every possible change that could be here is all going on all at the same time as this one is going on all around us. So like, I think that's the multiverse timeline. Like you could dull it down to like, saying that there's only so many changes but it's like everything we could have different cameras or it could be a different office or it could yeah. be the same you know a what I'm saying a different cadence in my breath a different heartbeat <laughs> right? a different rate of growth hair growth like <laughs> all of that shit right <laughs> it could be the ever so slightly as tweak that you can't even perceive right some mm-hmm. people like to conceptualize it like this is there's a version of your life where you got coffee this morning yep. and the day's just a little bit different the whole day because of where that where you coffee. missed that light or where you made that light or whatever. And then you gave that money to that homeless man or you didn't didn't give the money or mm-hmm. you can take stems and variables all day long, but a good writer would just do like a couple like different things that happen because of that, you know? Mm-hmm. But the multiverse theory is all of the realities of all of the things you were could have couldn't have done and all of the potential outlines and trees of all of those things are playing out with you all of the time. Yeah, it's like Rick, Rick and Morty has that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the multiverse. It's like stemmed on that, that they can just go to another version of yeah. themselves. And... Like, all right, in this universe, we didn't die. Or like, we did die, so we're just going to replace our dead selves. <laughs> right. And th- Yeah, so, but here's the thing, is that like, I think that that's a fun theory because there's, we it helps us do something with all of our potential. With every, all of the choices that we're making all the time, just all of the choices that we did not make, that subconscious thought plays itself out, I think, in us believing in this multiverse theory because it's kind of comforting to know, well, at least it's going on somewhere. Mm, like there's a me mm. that's a famous baseball player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's the me that, you know, got married to my high school sweetheart. There's a me that whatever, all these different life choices you could have made. It's yeah. like there's a version out there of me doing that and it's just not me in this one right now. But because there's a me that is doing that, it doesn't feel so existentially scary that this is the only time. I have no other chances. If I don't do it here, it doesn't get done. And I think that thought's so anxiety inducing. We like multiverse theory, but I don't want to shy away from the fact that I think that this is like the one universe. Hmm. It's a bold claim. I don't even like it per se. <laughs> you know, there are a whole bunch of, I guess, what, galaxies and other planets and the universe or whatever. The yeah, solar system is expanding, has crazy amounts of, crazy amount of crazy amount of shit. Okay. The easiest way for me to bring it to the table is through Christianity, but I didn't come to this feeling through a Christian lens per se. But like in the Bible, there's no, they're like, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. God made this reality. Yeah, and regardless of if that is even true, multiverse theory, right? it literally doesn't fucking matter. Like, <laughs> you're here, bitch. Like, there might be other universes out there. I, I think I mentioned this last pod, but I didn't articulate it 100% the way I'm, I'm about to. But it's just like, because I think you might not, you definitely don't wake up in the same world you put to sleep in. So maybe whenever you go to sleep, you go somewhere else based on what you put into that day prior and whatever. Because like, you wake up, people die every hour. It's like when you wake up in a different, or you when when you wake up in a different day, it's a different reality. It's different for sure than it was yesterday, and we just assume it's the same. We just have the memory of what it was yesterday and memories of our past yesterdays that were longer than yesterday ago. But with that, who knows what the fuck? It might just be a memory, or you know, saying now you're in a different place, and like now you got to do it again. It's like you die when you sleep, and then you come back as a different regenerated being. And maybe you not not die, but you know what I'm saying. Maybe you fucking I I remember it was almost visualized to me a while ago, but I I was running this kind of thought theory and I was getting super wavy. It was whenever lizards were fucking popping off in my, in my HUD all the time in my matrix and lizards were like representative of like regeneration and regrowth and they regrow their tails and that kind of shit, whatever, either way. But there was like a, I, I, I had an idea or it was like, I think we're like all expanding, you know what I'm saying? We're like expanding, like the universe is expanding. And it's like a whole bunch of Venn diagrams and like the amount and rate of our expansion would, would allow us to then be a overlapping Venn diagram with another universe or whatever it is, a rate of expansion. And then based on our rate of expansion and what we've been thinking about, what we've been doing, we like traverse through those different potentials when we go to sleep. And then we wake up in a, wherever we landed based on what we, however, however much we're able to or not able to 
expand ourselves and whatever, have a different perspective or execution. It's like, like there's definitely a reality where we didn't have this because this thought just like inhabited me in like July, you know, so maybe before that, definitely like before that, in like June for sure. It was just like, out of nowhere almost it seems like right like kind of kind of nowhere and now we're here so it's just i don't know it's uh maybe your rate of expansion would just allow you to jump to other universes if you fucking do it right hypothetically i don't know but regardless that's kind of like a, a cross between the two it's like yes there is potentially multiverses and an infinite amount of places you can go but none of that fucking matters because you're fucking here ultimately you're here but it does matter a lot because you can bridge yourself to somewhere that's better than here if you do it correctly. You shouldn't deny yourself the opportunity to do that by not believing in it. Mm. That's yeah, that's big time. Yeah, because you're definitely here. I promise. You <laughs> are. It's a it's a weird thing to be alive. It's a weird thing to experience yourself being alive. To strongman, my Trippy. argument. I I don't now I don't want to not believe in the multiverse theory because I want to leave the potential for me to transmute into better <laughs> opportunities for myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And we do believe in evolution and e elevation and delevation definitely right so you yeah. gotta like get through the season hopefully with that transcendent arc so that way you keep getting to the better and better reality for yourself mm -hmm. so we want to be able to do that to cross those thresholds i do but part of what brought us to this place was the feeling that you have inside that we don't want to be old and say this could have been the life where we did this this and this so like the knowing that this is the only experience we're going to have pushed us to create an experience that, you know, is this now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we didn't do it because there was a lot of multiverse. There was a lot of potentials for us out there. We did it because this is the only one that we get to live. Mm -hmm. This is our life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's hard to say. And that, I mean, like, I guess we believed in the multiverses or whatever, but it, it wasn't satisfactory for me to be like, cool. That's cool that I'm just going to do this little whatever this life presents to me without any kind of, you know, shaking the snow globe up. Hmm. Yeah, because we're here. Because we're fucking here and we have autonomy. And we have yeah. choices we can make and free will. We can't just, or we, I guess you could just let, let shit play out, but we can exist. We can do something here. We're alive. It's like, what the fuck is that? What's that even mean? <laughs> Some of it, it's insane. To be, just to be, just being. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Some people it's say insane. Dog, it's insane. You know, there's animals and shit. You know, mm -hmm. nature and ecosystems and shit. Kind of just a result of. Uh, Where's the product of, of evolution? Where's the product of millions and millions and billions of years of the planet becoming a planet having allowing life to be sustained here and then having that evolution take course for millions of years How about the, like, who knows yes yes and no i believe i believe in evolution i guess why not why the fuck not man i guess the bible doesn't really go into evolution we're kind of just made in the image and then they fall and then we're born from them either way though we're fucking here it doesn't matter y'all we're fucking in the game man you're in you're in the game. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're in here. You got to do something. You got to do something. You got to live. You got to eat. You got to have water, food, shelter, oxygen. You're chilling. It's a nuanced thing. It's so weird. But the people that are having the most fun are people that are just embracing the fact that they're here. So like... And trying to make this one as worth it as possible. What would that look like? What would that mean? Yeah, dude, when we say a rich dude driving fast cars, having fun, we're like, well, that'd be cool. If you were doing that with your life, this wouldn't be so fucking horrifying. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But there's something like inspiring about that. And it's just like, I think the thing that's inspiring, maybe now that we're talking about this, is like, that's what I'm saying. There is no direct answer to that question. Like, why am I alive? <laughs> why? But when you see someone else who you just see another person and they're just fucking doing dope shit or having fun on a boat and you're just like, well, that would be fucking cool. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this life is just being like, just embracing it, just embracing the ambiguity of like, we don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? They're doing this and they're doing that. Those people are happy. Those people are not. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. do with it what you will, kid. Welcome <laughs> to the fucking game, brother. Mm -hmm. It's GTA, bro. 
Yeah, being a kid and sitting in the shower in the dark thinking, why? Why? I thought to myself, like, I might, you know, must have asked for this. We talked about that. Yeah. There might be a theological answer, too, or like a biblical answer for sure. It's like, there's a plan for you. That's why you're here. Or like, you're planning, you're here to figure out what that plan is and then to execute it. Part of your, what's that? Let's do it. Why does the Bible say that God made people? This is series tight now. You can just ask it questions, and it, most of the time it just tells you. So he made him his own image. Do yeah. they have an AI now for Apple? Apple didn't didn't that come out recently? I uh, definitely AI knows how to like go through the Bible and have theological discussions. Yeah, I think I remember seeing somewhere that AI has been introduced into Apple the same way that Google has AI now. Gal, oh, what's it called? Fuck, I forgot. Some with a G. Gemini. There it is. Okay. What is that? It's just their AI. Like whenever you Google something, it'll like AI search it for you. Okay. And as well as produce results. I guess their version of ChatGPT or whatever. Might be the same fucking software. <laughs> it really says that it, it just says he made us for his good works. I mean, yeah. 2911 says, for the I know the plans I have for you. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. But it doesn't say, like, I made you to fucking, you know, go through a character arc so I can grow you for the war to come. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Well, I don't want to have to search it again. But it, that that one just gave me all the scriptures that were relevant to, like, what I asked. Yeah. And it was mostly just made made in his image, made for his good works, made to have dominion over the land and the sea. Hmm. Yeah, we're here to find out why we're here. <laughs> That's where the faith comes in. The faith jump. Because none of us know. None of us know for sure. Well, that's not in the scripture. It doesn't say you're made to find out why you're here. <laughs> that would be a mind F, dude. Mm. That would be like on t-shirts and stuff like that. That's like an alien thought. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It'd be like, whoa. But it doesn't say quite that. But maybe that's part of, that's his good work. Part of the implication. It's funny why you're here. The plan, the, the plan that's laid out for you. It says that, yeah, I guess that there's other couple of scriptures I've seen for sure where it's mentioning like the path is like walk, walk the path that I've laid, laid for you. Mm. Like, that your steps are already, he's, I think Chance has a bar about it. He's ordered my steps. There it is. Mm. Like, the steps are ordered. It's already written for you. You can just, you just go and live a, live your blessed life. But fuck, man. You gotta believe that. You gotta look for it. You don't want to find that. Who knows? Who really knows why we're here? Yeah, nobody. They've asked that question for years. That's we're all wondering that in the back of our minds, whether you like tackle that question or grapple and wrestle with that question or not. Some people are just like, nah, nothing. We're just fucking existing here. Fuck this. Or whatever. It's like, damn. 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 That's some shit. They 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 gave up. I don't think that's their true end result thought. Like, yeah, you just fucking waste time here until you die. Of course. You don't know about that? Yeah, you just die. That's it. It's like, nah, dude. Like, you're tripping on something. You gave up on something. You quit. You, you, there's no way. That's all you think about it. Mm-hmm. Some people try to strike a balance. So we think, you know what I'm saying? My life, and also life leads you places, you know? I think your input does matter, and how far you're willing to dream does matter. Mm-hmm. What are you aiming at? Yeah. That's a big part of it. Yeah, think about like a high school football coach. Uh Is that like a great job? Is that a good balance? For someone out there, it's like everything they want. I think. Right? 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 There's someone out there that's perfect for them. It's not boats and hoes. (laughs) (laughs) Are, Are some people just destined for boats and hoes? I think they want boats and hoes. Boat and hoe destiny? <laughs> <laughs> That's Destiny Island. Manifest destiny. Are some people destined for boats and hoes? If that's what they're aiming at, what's what they really want? I don't know. Maybe they think they really want that. Are people destined for fame? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Mm, 
I don't know. It's we're we're getting into the to the gray area. Maybe maybe, but it also depends on you. It also depends on your input. Like like you were mentioning, it does. It definitely does. At some point, did all famous people ask to be famous? I don't think Jordan Peterson asked to be famous. Did he want the biggest platform he could get? I think he did, though, right? Well, how big is that platform? You know what I'm saying? He wants to write an an impactful and meaningful book and have that book be read by as many people as possible. So in that sense, he definitely wants to be, like, famous. Yeah. Or known. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying is I think there's some kind of input for, for that grand viewership somewhere along the line. Mm Mm-hmm. So like, careful what you wish for. That's like a thing, you know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Maybe I don't know. People just born to be actors or born to be musicians. Sometimes it definitely seems that way. Like Jimi Hendrix. That guy's story is crazy. That guy goes nuts. So what makes a Jimmy Hendrix? Fucking nuts. Dude. How do you get that guy? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's a great question. I don't that's know. the shit. Who yeah. knows how you get a Jimi Hendrix or fucking Michael D'Angelo? Michelangelo. It's a good question. It could be the stars, <sighs> cosmic timing. Just the timing of Zodiac things. signs. Yeah, but we're trying to we're trying to explain the unexplainable. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're always tackling the unexplainable. That's just how it goes. That's that's we're gonna wrestle with something, wrestle with something something big. We're trying to get to the root. Yeah. Anything funny happened to you over the week? What's been going down on the week? Oh, yeah, it was your birthday weekend. Saturday we went to dinner. Fucking Don's dinner. New steakhouse in the city. Don Fantastic. Driven. Yeah. Mad Men. Draper. Peaky Boys. New steakhouse. Yeah, it was big chilling vibes. What else did we do this weekend or this past week? Not really, guys. We've been setting up the sheesh at the birthday weekend. And then we went to, or tried to go to, Six Flags yesterday and got rained on. Just a little bit of rain. Nothing crazy. No thunderstorms. If there's a thunderstorm, they definitely just shut it down. So really? Get the fuck out of here. I thought about that. Get the fuck out of here. I felt it raining. I was like, did they get a play period in the rain where it's like, no thunder, we're good? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was definitely coming down, but we were good. We were good to go. That's awesome. Yeah. And just, what else has been? Anything funny going on? No, I'm just trying to remember anything. I guess we've just been watching a lot of Game of Thrones. It's not really funny particularly, but it's fucking incredible. <laughs> it's so good. It's gotten to like, we're in season seven. I think it's only eight seasons. So we're in season seven now and it's just fucking gas. It's just gas. It's like the more I'm watching it, this is probably my, this is my second time watching this season, but I've seen the series, other seasons multiple times, but watching this season now, it's like, oh man, this is, they made this season for like the fans. Like this is like what the people wanted to see back in season one and two. It's like, it's finally happening. It's like, oh, this is fucking tight. Super good. Every episode, almost every scene is just like this is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's it's great. It's at this point, every episode, every scene is just fucking on the edge of your seat, just watching intently. It's like, oh my god, what the fuck's that happen? What the fuck's that? Happen? It's so good. It's so, hard. so I'm watching a lot of that. But I guess uh, I guess you were t- the the word funny just brought me back to in my last week at our previous employer. Just talking to some of the people. We we're talking about what we we're talking about. I guess we we're talking about TV shows. Maybe funny TV shows. We got into comedies either way from TV shows. And then uh, Seinfeld was brought up. But that was just, I remember there was one particular episode where George Costanza takes that IQ test or he wants to take an IQ test for, to like to impress some girl or some shit. But then he gets Elaine to take the IQ test for him because she's like a genius. And it's just one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen in my life, bro. I don't know why. Like th- that particular scene where he's like, just talking to his or talking to this lady and like lying to her face <laughs> just fucking lying to her face he's like supposed to be in her room or in like a room in her house like taking the test like an IQ test to verify and validate that he's doing it but then like he gets the test back from Elaine and it got a whole bunch of shit spilled yeah, on it yeah coffee on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like, like gets the test back gives it to her and she's like What's all over this test? He's like, oh yeah, I went, I went, went to the store. <laughs> like, yeah. You went to the store? Yeah. He's like, not you didn't leave at the front door though. He's like, yeah, I went through the window. <laughs> like, you went through the window to the store. Yeah. It's like, is this coffee? Yeah, I, I, I stopped and got coffee too. <laughs> He's just like burying himself in this line, just so just non nonchalant, just fucking selling it, just sticking to the story, even though he's caught red-handed. This that particular scene, I remember laughing harder at that scene than I've laughed at anything in a long time. 
I was just like, this is fucking hilarious. Really? <laughs> yeah. What was killing you about it? I don't know. Just like his his straight facedness about it. <laughs> like, he was so caught, and it was just like getting more and more like uh, preposterous. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I snuck out of the window to go get some fucking coffee and a pizza down the street. <laughs> While I'm taking this IQ test, I got hungry. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know why. But that was, we, we were talking about funny shit. And that was, that one will live in my mind. I was like, man. It's funny because it was an isolated moment. Or it was like a, I keep it in my memory log. You know what I'm saying? It's in my fucking database in my bank. From when you were rolling up. I'm like, that? yeah, yeah. Like, there's only a couple of moments. Or I'm sure if I, like, started to dive into my own film and look through the things that were, like, hilarious in my lifetime. But that one, for sure, that particular Watching that scene in my bed, it's like laughing my fucking ass off. I'll definitely remember that. It's like, it's like categorized and logged. I guess another moment for sure is like a super bad. Yeah. Watching super bad in the theaters with my homies. Fucking hilarious. Just dying. Mid- 10 out of 10 in high school experience. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10. We had to sneak into the movie. 10 out of 10. Nice. And the way we snuck into the movie was funny as fuck too because we were trying to get someone to buy the tickets for us because we had it was rated R. We had to be 17 or 18, whatever. And we were in high school. When when that movie came out, I don't even know. We we're probably like freshmen or sophomores, maybe even earlier, maybe eighth grade, freshman somewhere in that ballpark. Fourteen, thirteen, fourteen. But then we tried to get the tickets, couldn't get the fucking tickets. We ended up. What did we end up doing? I think we ended up buying. I think we bought tickets for another movie. Classic. And then you know what I'm saying. And then we were trying to figure out how to get into the Slash. into the super bad theater. Uh-huh. Out of the, all the theater options, and we was like we're. I don't even know. We had, we had almost lost hope, I think, at this point. Where it's like, man, the movie's going to start soon. Like, what the fuck? We need to figure out how to get in there. And then there was a moment where fucking Ryan Casey, my college roommate, he's like the most meek of the group, most like quiet, chill, like calm, like the good boy of the group, more or less. And then he's like, he doesn't say anything to us. He just like takes off. He just like breaks from our group and just like starts walking down the theater hall. And then we're like, well, what the fuck's he doing? Like he, <laughs> like Ryan lost it. He lost it. He said, I'm enough. I've had enough. I'm watching this movie. But no, 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 he just had to go pee. Oh. <laughs> it was in that moment that we realized, oh, like the movie's like right across from the theater. Or, I mean, the, the theater, that particular theater is right across from the restrooms. So it was like, oh shit, we just like fucking restrooms and boop, boop, just go right across. So it was like Gosh. perfect. It worked out perfectly. It's like, oh shit, we thought you were, you know, we followed him into the restroom. We're like, oh yeah, man, we thought you were just broke into this motherfucker. But he's like, no, I just had to really pee. It's like, <laughs> perfect. As soon as you're done, we're just going to go run, run right across. We just, boop, and had a great 10 out of 10 high school experience. Beautiful. <laughs> Watching one of the funniest movies well I've done, ever seen boys. in my life. That's badass. That movie still holds water now. You know, that movie was yeah. fucking hilarious. So funny, dude. It's such a funny movie. They used to watch it on a loop. It's cracking up, bro. So funny. We had a great, I think we had a great high school run of funny movies coming out. We had, yeah, Super Bad was like one of the first ones for sure. And then The First Hangover, Iconic. And Step Brothers and Pineapple Express. So we had all those in our high school times. So and I was like, oh my God, these movies are fucking awesome. Killers. <laughs> just just murderers, bro. Just some of the funniest movies of our time. Yeah. At least in my opinion. I agree. That's just grand. You can't really because of the culture, it's hard to make movies that are like that fucking wild, you know? Yeah, the state of the state of this current state of affairs. Yeah. The political landscape. Yeah. People, social landscape. People don't want to make movies about like dicks and stuff, you know? <laughs> it's like hard to develop those scenes. They're like, is this okay? You know? At what point have we crossed the line? Comedies are really suffering. Yeah. I've heard multiple comedians and actors kind of talk about that. Yeah. In the last year or two. A couple of years. Yeah. What about you? Anything, any fun, anything funny happen? Man. Anything yeah. going on in the story over the last couple of days? No. Watching that Chinese restaurant lady go crazy. She was just, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the rain or what, but it was also just funny because I, like, when I called for Chinese food, super busy. Uh, just over the phone, I'm like, she's like, hold on. Oh, I don't want to do like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the social landscape, watch out. Be careful. <laughs> hold on, <please. laughs> puts me on hold, but doesn't really put me on hold. Just puts the phone down. Okay. Hello. What would you like today? Takes takes a whole order. Handling another order. Going crazy. While I'm driving, I see like uh, someone, like an Uber pull up, and then someone come outside for their Uber, and then when I pull up to the Chinese food, packed, and there's like eight people, I count them, eight people waiting for to-go's. Some of them are just Ubers. And then when I'm driving home, I see another person pulling in and parking where I parked, and he gets out to deliver an Uber. I'm like, this rain, everybody's just like, let me fucking... Get the Chinese food real quick. Right? Crazy. Interesting. Right. 
so the Chinese place is just going off. She's and then I was just tripping because I was like, man, how many times were we like trying to pack a house? It's like, but when it rains, this Chinese food place is packed. It's like such a different subset for like, oh, it's gonna be busy today. Yeah, you see that cloud over there? <laughs> we might be packed. People want that hot and sour chicken, right? And I thought it was too because it was weird too because it was Labor Day. I was mm. like, wouldn't most people be like barbecuing or something? Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe not because it's, they can't barbecue because it's raining. Either way, everybody's ordering Chinese food right now. And then the lady just working the counter, just like, you know, she had like some helpers, but she was like taking all the orders out and taking the orders and swiping the cards. And she wasn't cooking the food, but she was like selling it all. She was just like, it was crazy just watching her play restaurant. And I was like, she slammed. She's making money. Ball out, lady. Got to go crazy right Ball now. Ball out of control. Funny stuff that happened, yo. So so in so in that moment, there's like a, a moment where two people are... Facing the counter. And then this one lady is like, uh, you know, or no, the lady with the bags looks at the name. She's like, are you Moana? And she's like, no. And then she's like, okay, never mind. And then like keeps looking at what she's looking at. And she's like, I'm looking for blank and says her name. And then she's like, okay, hold on. So it's looking at the bags for that girl's name. But then this lady next to her is like, I've been waiting here for like 15 minutes. I'm also waiting for food. And I'm like. Looking at my phone like, oh shit. <laughs> and then this lady's like, uh it was it was so Seinfeld esque because <laughs> like this lady asked for the thing, this lady interjects. This lady doesn't know what to do. She's like, just scans all the bags and then she's like, finds the bag that's this lady's bag, the the first lady, Moana. Mm-hmm. Or no, the, the, whatever her name actually was. And then brings her she's like, Okay, yeah, I can check you out too. And then starts like cashing that lady out. And this lady's just like, bitch, what the fuck? Like, um, is that not my food right over there? And then the lady's like doing the thing or whatever. And then she, the, this lady, while she's paying, steps up and is like, that's my food right there. I'm looking for Sarah. And then she's like, okay, Sarah, um, just one second, okay? Mm. And then she's like, oh my God. And then like waits for the whole lady to complete her whole transaction and then get her food and then leaves. And then I stand up in this time because I'm like, hold on, there's people back there with food. And people are just like, that's my food, motherfucker, give me my food. I'm like, is mm. my food over there? Where's my food at? And then they come out with a bag and then they hand it to her. And then she's like, oh, and looks at me and she's like, this one is for you. And I'm like, nice. And then I look at the lady and I'm just like, you can go ahead. <laughs> but in that moment, I really wanted to just pull out my wallet and hand her <laughs> my guard and just fucking obliterate her. You know what I'm saying? Mm, just get dunked on. But it was such a funny, like, uh, but I'm well. She's okay. I know you were first, but hold on. Let me just. Uh, well, actually, you. And I, it was just like too much. Do you want to pay? Yeah, right, <laughs> bitch. I'm right here. She would have got slaughtered. Fifteen right there. minutes. And it was funny because she. Was, her food was ready. The she was acting. Ready? Yeah, it was ready. So she oh, was right. Gosh, you know what I'm saying? That was all cold and shit. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? Bruh. So you have time to go sometimes, man. Oh, have to if you're gonna do it right. Yeah. First in, first out. Mm, what were you saying? First out, first out. First just hilarious. Just just a perfect Seinfeld sequence oh, of yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, you know that's definitely saying? a Seinfeld scene for sure. So I fun. think that happens in Seinfeld actually. <laughs> really? For the reservation? So, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it is. It's not for a to-go order, but it's for a reservation for a table. They're like, we've been waiting for 15 minutes. And they, they just like walked in and got sat. Like, what the fuck? It's like, your table's being... It's almost ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's for like an hour. It's like your table's almost ready. Yeah, that lady, the other thing about the social situation was that that lady had acted just rude enough that if I would have handed her my card, I think that the Asian lady would have just checked me out. Mm-hmm. No cap. And I felt bad for her in that moment. We make our own justice. We do. We make our own justice. We're all Batman. We're all Batman. I'm Batman. But we're also, I'm Batman too. We're all Batman. <laughs> Batwoman. Bat person. <laughs> <laughs> no joke though. Mm. Like those little moments make up. It was funny to me to have like I was so outside watching the scene that I was able to be like, "Oh, here's justice." Like, go ahead. Like, don't, think, don't worry about it. Zero attachment. You got it. Come on. People are crazy though. People are crazy. She could have lost it if you would have given her your card. She, just she could have lost. Pulls it. a gun Whoa! Out of her purse. <laughs> Let's be down. It's Texas. It is Texas. But yeah, pe- people. You never because everybody going through something. You never know what she's going through. She could have been on the edge of insanity. And then you were just like, no, it's okay. You can go ahead. She could have been a literal crazy person. Like, Thank you. Yeah, like, yeah. Not even on the edge, you know what I'm saying? Actually crazy. Masqueraded. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Jesus. But true, right on the edge, you know, you know what I'm saying? You never know. She should break down crying. So mm-hmm. sobbing. Mm-hmm. She's freaking out. Everyone looks over me. Oh, yeah, whatever. Whatever the whatever's going on in her entire life unfolding experience. We're all just universes. We're all just fucking crazy. I'm just trying to help. Let me just help. Yeah, yeah. It's like Go ahead. Don't worry. Don't worry. Make it easy. Just chill, bro. Just fucking chill. That's awesome. Yeah. Then That's I got awesome. in the car and listened to What'd a What'd you pod- get? Dude, after surveying the menu. It's my favorite Chinese place. But my favorite Chinese dish is sesame chicken. Classic. But my favorite Chinese place doesn't make a good sesame chicken dish. Damn it. I know. So I outsourced that. But I went with, I wanted General So's chicken, but I think I'd gotten it one time. And it was just so spicy. It was like just chili chicken, basically. Yeah. But normally Gen- General So's is just like a little hot, depending where you're at. So I asked her, I'm like, yo, is is that hot, hot? And she's like, oh, well, how, what do you want it to be? And I was like, that's a crazy customization feature you just gave me. Nice. I want it like mid hot. Can you give me like a 4.5 out of 10? Mm-hmm. And then she's like, for sure. Got you. So I had custom General So's chicken and crab rangoon. Ooh. And I went with the fried rice too. Yeah. Because it was yeah, like. Now we talking. Yeah. I really cheated on my diet all weekend. Now right? we eating. But I didn't. Birthday weekend. The rules were off, but I stayed pretty tight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, fuck it. Not ridiculous. Yeah. Not ridiculous. Keep it selling. Yeah. That's what's up, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. 10 30. Yeah. This past weekend. Boom. 30 Berg. 30 Burgers, dig. Train to. It's crazy. Hell yeah. It flies by, man. Every week, I realize you gotta just fucking be careful. Because before you know it, it's gonna be Sunday again. Before you know it, it's gonna be Sunday again. It's like, fuck, hopefully I got some shit done that week. You know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna be Sunday again. And we're done with football listness. Football's coming back. We're not zero Sundays now. We are zero Sundays away. This coming Sunday, it's going down. In two days, it's going down. Season opener. But a couple of days ago, I was thinking, this is the last Sunday without football until February. Let's Life fucking go. Different in February. Let's go, brother. First time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's our first pod in the new studio. We're still getting everything set up. We decided just to do one just to just to do one, you know, just to do it here. We're not, we still have, we, we're going to do some backdrops, but now we have a different alternative Omaha audible play call. We're going to do some curtains back, or giant curtains back here. Giant curtain on that side. We'll get the TP and stuff, but this is this is it for the most part. A couple more things to go, but we're going to do that green wall, do some more shit here later on in a, in a second. But first work day, officially, first podcast, officially, in the MD38 Productions studio. So excited about that. Oh, yeah. Shit's going down. Hell yeah. It's Absolutely awesome. exciting. Enthralling. I'm enthralled. But yeah, you wanna 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 lead it off for about like an hour fifty two in. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we've been pushing. Pushing. Thank you for joining in with us. Thank you for going with us on this journey. Appreciate Got a lot of you. real fans and true support. Means and, a uh, lot. Just love you guys. All the love, all the respect, all the blessings. Thanks for sticking with us through the quantum mechanics talk. <laughs> we get out there. You know how we do it. You know what happens. That's who we are, baby. What we are, yeah. we're still finding out. Mm-hmm. We know who we are, but not who we may be. Well, we're still finding out. Thank you for finding out with us. Hopefully we helped you out, entertained you, made you laugh a couple times, made you think a couple times. We'll see you on the flip side. More, th- more pods coming up, more decorations coming up, more vlogs coming out, more music, more everything. MT38, till we die. Until I'm dead. Until I'm dead. Death. Deaf and dead. <laughs> See you later. Rolling through the city to the light, y'all. Really ain't no telling where.